know Adolf Hitler. You've never seen him like this before. Hitler's contemporaries, from his birth in Braunau to his death in the bunker, authentically flesh out the picture. Who was Hitler? Hitler neither finished school nor had any vocational training. He occasionally lived in homeless shelters or on the street. He refused to pursue a regular job. To this day, it seems inexplicable that he could come to power. Out of nowhere, Hitler became the Führer, leader of the German Reich, one of the most powerful men of the 20th century, starting an inferno that engulfed the world and brought death to millions of people. The nation worshipped him and followed him blindly into the abyss. But during his lifetime, he kept his origins and his life secret. No one should know how or who he was. Fascinating and oppressive accounts from companions, friends and enemies, as well as the most extensive collection of archive material ever shown. Much of it, hitherto unpublished, reveal who Hitler was and how he could become what he was. A notorious liar and an unscrupulous murderer. After the death of his strict father and beloved mother, Hitler lives as a layabout in Vienna, with no school graduation and twice rejected by the Academy of Arts. Living in a men's shelter, he paints postcards to bolster his small orphan's pension. In order to avoid being called up for military service in Austria, Hitler moves to Munich in Germany. As World War I begins, Hitler volunteers for the Bavarian army and becomes a German soldier and an ardent patriot. For the first time, he feels that he belongs somewhere and has a normal life. At the end of the war, Hitler does not know what to do next. On June the 30th, 1903, the 72-year-old Kaiser Franz Josef I visits Braunau am Inn to celebrate its 700th birthday. In a historical coincidence, this border town to Bavaria of all places is the origin of the oldest film footage shot by an Austrian cinematographer. In the late 80s of the last century, my parents lived in this small town on the Inn, which is Bavarian by blood and Austrian by nationality. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. The worst disaster to strike the town of Braunau occurred on March the 28th, 1874. A violent storm fanned a terrible fire that destroyed 120 buildings. This stroke of fate was a pivotal moment in the history of Braunau. Conrad Meindl, History of Braunau on Inn, 1882. Fifteen years later, Adolf, the youngest son of the customs inspector Alois Hitler, who worked in Braunau and Zimbach, was born. Eduard Griechbaum, History of Braunau am Inn, 1938. A terrible disaster for hundreds of millions of people worldwide. The customs inspector and his family occupy a small apartment on the top floor of the Pommer Hotel in Braunau. At Easter time on April the 20th, 1889, at about 6.30 in the evening, Adolf Hitler is born. Parish Register, Braunau. Adolfus Hitler, born on April the 20th, 1889, at 6.30 in the evening, baptized on April the 22nd at 3.15 by Ignaz Probst. To begin with, there is this picture of little Adolf from the year 1889, a few months after his birth. One thing worthy of note in this first picture of Hitler is the close resemblance of Adolf to his mother. August Kubitzek, childhood friend of Adolf Hitler. Adolf 
Olaf Hitler is the third of the couple's six children. He and his younger sister Paula are the only ones to survive beyond childhood. The mother is 28 years old at the time of the birth. The father is 51. Clara Hitler is related to Alois Hitler. She's her husband's second cousin. Until she became his wife, Alois Hitler called her his cousin without further ado. Even though Clara Pürzel was only a second cousin, the bride and groom needed a church dispensation to marry. August Kubitzek. The history of film as a medium also begins in Hitler's childhood. When Hitler is three years old, his father is transferred to a new post and decides to move into an apartment in Passau on the German side of the border. Adolf Hitler lives with his family in Bavaria for three years, until 1895. Actually, Hitler didn't speak a typical Austrian dialect. August Kubitzek. In my youth, my German was the dialect spoken in Lower Bavaria. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. The oldest film recording made in Austria-Hungary was shot by foreigners, the Lumiere brothers. It shows Vienna, the capital of a multinational empire, in the year 1896. In old Austria, you could travel without a passport, from the Mediterranean, over the Alps, way into the east, the west and the north. Oskar Kokoschka, painter and writer. Hitler's ancestry from Lower Austria, as well as a total of 21 years spent in Upper Austria and Vienna, do not suffice to make him Austrian in the sense of a citizen of that nation. Kurt Schuschnigg, Austrian Chancellor from 1934 to 1938. Austrians who spoke about the nation before 1938 meant the national culture that extended beyond their borders, which is what Austrian man also identified with. This cultural nation is Germany. Transporting a locomotive through the streets of Chemnitz, 16 workhorses pull the locomotive as the factory has no rail connection. The majority of German-speaking Austrians feel close links to the Germans in Prussia, Saxony, Bavaria, and the smaller federal states already united in a partly industrialized Reich. He was a grumpy, reticent old man, and like a lot of political free spirits at the time, a stern German nationalist. Joseph Meyerhofer, farmer in the village of Leonding by Linz. A visit to his parents' grave. His school friends say his mother was loving and kind-hearted. The father cold, silent and strict. Josef Goebbels, diary, July 22nd, 1938. In June 1939, Eva Braun films the small farm in the village of Haarfeld in Upper Austria that Hitler's father leases after retiring early in 1895. On May the 1st, 1895, Hitler starts school in a one-room schoolhouse in the neighboring village of Fischelham. After school, he plays popular games of the period. Playing war, only war games for us boys became boring, but he always found someone to play with. Baldwin von Wellering, schoolmate of Hitler. In the year 1897, Hitler's father sells the farm in Haarfeld. The family lives temporarily in the small town of Lambach.
Adolf Hitler's parents bought house number 61 with adjacent plots of land in Leonding on November the 14th, 1898. Their son Adolf had just turned 10 years old. Max Zixter, Leonding, the Führer's hometown Linz, 1938. I never loved my father, but feared him all the more. Adolf Hitler, Table Talk, recorded by his secretary, Christa Schroeder. My brother Adolf provoked my father to such extremes that he was beaten every day. Paula Hitler, later Paula Wolf. Pictures from Hitler's school years are always shots of the whole class. You can still remember what it was like. August Kubitzek. Adolf Hitler lives in Leonding near Linz for about eight years. He attends the fourth and fifth grades here. In his stories, his youth played a big part. He was a poor student. Albert Speer, the Kranzberg Protocol. After five years at elementary school, in 1900, Adolf Hitler, aged 11, begins secondary school in the city of Linz. Adolf Hitler has to repeat his first year at secondary school due to poor grades. I remember the scrawny, pale boy who commuted every day between Linz and Leonding fairly well. He was definitely talented on the one hand, but was not in control of himself. He was considered rebellious, and he didn't work hard. Dr. Edward Humer, Hitler's French teacher. At the secondary school in Linz, there is a strident, widespread pan-German nationalism among the teachers. They want to join the united, strong German Reich of Bismarck, who is greatly admired. Adolf was a great fan of Bismarck, classmate of Hitler's. The quiet life enjoyed by the Hitler family on its little patch of land only lasted a few years. The head of the family died unexpectedly of a heart attack in January 1903. Max Zixtel, Leonding, the Führer's hometown. Alois Hitler leaves his modest savings to his four surviving children, Alois and Angela from the second of his three marriages, and Adolf and Paula. This inheritance is to be paid out when they come of age. The quiet cemetery of Leonding was his final resting place. His widow moved to the nearby city of Linz for the better educational opportunities for her children. Max Zixtel. Linz, the capital of Upper Austria is located 264 meters above sea level on the right bank of the Danube. Two steel bridges connect the town to Uafa on the other side. Linz has 58,791 mostly German and Catholic residents. Meyer's Great Encyclopedia, Leipzig, 1908. The tone of society was determined by the business community, the bureaucracy, and the military. If you wanted to be seen, you met in the evening for a stroll on the high street, which, significantly, was called Country Road. August Kubitzek. Although this nonsense also exists in other countries, Racial ideology, and with it anti-Semitism, had its center of power in old Austria. In contrast to Vienna, in western Austria there were hardly any Jews. Karl Tickmann, German-Austrian dramatist. At school, I met a Jewish boy, 
whom we all treated with caution, but only because we didn't trust his silence. I didn't think anything of it, nor did the others. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. In a coincidence of history, in 1903, two students at Linz Secondary School pose for a photo. A few decades later in professional life, they will become infamous and famous. Adolf Hitler is only a few days older than the factory owner's son of Jewish descent from Vienna. Ludwig Wittgenstein is two years ahead of Hitler in school. He later becomes a philosopher and one of the pioneers of the logical positivism and the analytic philosophy of language movements. In 1906, Wittgenstein begins his studies in Berlin. In 1904, Clara Hitler has to send her son Adolf, who due to bad grades is again in danger of not moving upper class, to the state secondary school in Steyr, 40 kilometers away. Look at my school grades. I had bad marks in German. That idiot of a professor spoiled the German language for me. I would never be able to write a proper letter. Adolf Hitler, in the Führer's headquarters, 1943. Last grades at secondary school in Steyr. Diligence, inconsistent. German, insufficient. Geography and history, sufficient. Mathematics, insufficient. Physics, satisfactory. Freehand drawing, commendable. Sport, excellent. I don't have a photograph of Adolf Hitler during the years of our friendship. There probably aren't any photos of Hitler during this period. Everything that could be said about images of Hitler as a young man has already been said, were it not for the drawing by a classmate from the fourth grade of the junior high school in Steyr. By chance, this drawing, done in 1905, was preserved. The boy could only draw profiles. Nevertheless, there is something peculiarly fascinating about this pencil sketch. August Kubitzek. After nine years, Adolf Hitler finishes school without graduating. For the following three years, he lives in Linz on his mother's pension, not really doing anything. All of his relatives considered him worthless, a person who shied away from any gainful employment from the start. August Kubitzek. Clara Hitler lives with her stepdaughter Angela, her son Adolf and her 12-year-old daughter Paula in an apartment in Urfa on the north bank of the Danube in Linz. Film is the most modern medium of the time, but Adolf Hitler is keen on architecture and opera. Vienna is the world capital of music. In the years when I was growing up, Everything in music was fermentation and rebirth, with Gustav Mahler at the centre. Vicky Baum, student at the Vienna Academy of Music. Adolf Hitler talks his mother into allowing him to travel to Vienna. He wants to apply for admission to the general painting class at the Academy of Fine Arts. From early in the morning to late at night, I ran from one sightseeing attraction to the next. But the buildings were the only things that fascinated me. All of Ring Street affected me like a spell from the Arabian Nights. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. From 1904 to 1908, I was Adolf Hitler's only friend in Linz and thereafter in Vienna. August Kubitzek. Postcard to August Kubitzek. May the 7th, 1906. I've arrived safely and I'm seeing all the sights. Tomorrow I'm going to the opera to see Tristan. The day after tomorrow, the Flying Dutchman, etc. Although I find everything really beautiful here, I miss Lentz very much. Greetings from your friend, Adolf Hitler. Hitler, who later in the opinion of a few art experts was not entirely untalented, manages to pass the first selection but is turned down after the second. Adolf Hitler, born in Braunau, 
Upper Austria, on April the 20th, 1889. German, Catholic, few faces, test drawing unsatisfactory. Classification list of the general painting class. When Adolf Hitler, disappointed by the rejection, returns to his family in Linz after eight weeks, Clara Hitler is struck down with a serious illness. She's suffering from a swelling. Nowadays, it would be diagnosed as cancer. For several months, Adolf Hitler devotedly takes care of his mother at home. Dr. Bloch, well loved by all, was the Hitler family physician. August Kubitzek. To a great degree, the boy lived in his own world. I have no idea what dreams he dreamt. Dr. Edward Bloch, Jewish physician of the Hitler family. Clara Hitler dies in the night of December the 21st, 1907, surrounded by her family. In 1940, Adolf Hitler will allow his Jewish family doctor and his wife Lily to emigrate to the United States. The death of our mother had a great effect on me and Adolf. We were very attached to our mother. When she died, Adolf stopped coming home. Paula Hitler, Adolf Hitler's sister. Vienna was the heart of the monarchy. This is where the last life of the sick, old body of the rotting Reich ebbed away. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. Many, like me, dreamed that later in life they would make their home in the imperial city. Manus Sperber, Austrian-French writer. A grey city, wonderfully grey, like Paris, like every one of these very old European cities. Vicky Baum, writer. In contrast to what Hitler's sister Paula claims later, Adolf Hitler remains in Linz several weeks after the death of his mother. He never tells his family or his friend Kubitzek that he failed the admissions test the previous year. Apparently, he was having some really bad days. He was easily irritated and gave me short shrift when I started to talk about my studies. August Kubitzek. In the spring of 1908, Adolf Hitler begins living the life of a wastrel in the metropolis. Vienna was the most thorough education of my life. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. The small inheritance that was diligently managed by his guardian had to cover both the cost of living and his studies. He may have been able to supplement his income through the sale of drawings and paintings. August Kubitzek. Adolf Hitler had convinced his friend's parents to allow their son to study music in Vienna. Dear friend, I'm eagerly awaiting word on your visit. Write soon so that I can prepare the festivities. All of Vienna is waiting. Adolf Hitler. Our living conditions were extremely modest. For a long time, I couldn't get out of him where he ate for lunch. My question would be gruffly brushed aside. August Kubitzek. In Vienna, Hitler shares an apartment with Kubitzek and prepares for a second attempt to get into the Academy of Art. The Führer knew the Viennese well. They're a disgusting pack made up of a mixture of Poles, Czechs, Jews and Germans. Josef Goebbels, diary. He loved Vienna, but not the Viennese. That's how I describe his attitude. August Kubitzek. In 1910, there were more than 175,000 practicing Jews living in Vienna. According to the criteria of racial anti-Semitism, 
which refers solely to ancestry regardless of the practice of religion, the number of Jews is much higher. I am now fairly sure that Vienna was the most anti-Semitic city that I've ever lived in. Egon Schwartz, Viennese Jew. Hitler was by no means a Jew hater in those days. Reinhold Hannes, Hitler's housemate in the Brigettenau men's hostel. At the time, the town's mayor was Dr. Karl Lueger, a lawyer, a passionate German nationalist, a known anti-Semite and the founder of the Christian Social Party that represented people in German-speaking Austria. Oh, in Vienna, there are Jews like sand at the seaside. Everywhere, nothing but Jews. Dr. Karl Lueger. Karl Lueger dies on March the 9th, 1910, at the age of 65. His funeral is reportedly the most beautiful such ceremony in Viennese history. Karl Lueger was the role model from whom he learned the effectiveness of anti-Semitic agitation. Stefan Zweig, Austrian writer, The World of Yesterday. As the huge funeral procession of the deceased mayor moved from the town hall to Ringstrasse, I too found myself among the many hundreds of thousands watching the funeral procession. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. With his catchphrase, we have to help the little man, Karl Lueger captivated the entire lower class and the frustrated middle class with it. The same social classes that Adolf Hitler later assembled around him. Stefan Zweig. I came to know the man and the movement. I see in the man today, more than ever before, the most powerful German mayor of all time. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. As Hitler watches the funeral, many months have passed since his last contact with his friend Kubitschek. For the next months, there is no trace of Hitler's activities in Vienna. He's broken off contact with his family, and he fails the second entrance test at the Art Academy. I was a young, inexperienced man, without any means of support, forced to get by on my own. The few kronen, often only cents, from the proceeds of my work were barely enough to pay for my bed and board. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. Hitler probably also went hungry and stayed in community hostels. He begins to copy street views of Vienna from books and then sells them as postcards. And yet in one respect, the bleakness of my surroundings didn't bother me. In my mind, I spent these years living in palaces. Adolf Hitler, monologue in the Führer's headquarters. In London, a member of parliament who was raised in a palace is concerned about the fulfillment of his dream. He expresses this in a letter. Do you know, I would greatly like to have some practice in the handling of large forces. I am sure I have the root of the matter in me, but never, I fear, in this state of existence will it have a chance of flowering in bright red bloom. Winston Churchill. Hitler's share of his father's inheritance is paid out on April the 20th, 1913, his 24th birthday. Hitler met Rudolf Häusler in a men's hostel. With him, he wants to move to the German city of Munich. He was just full of praise for this city. 
and at the same time he didn't forget the large beer gardens and radishes, etc. Housemate of Hitler's in 1912. The main reason for leaving Austria is probably that the later Commander-in-Chief Adolf Hitler wants to get out of doing military service. On Saturday, May the 24th, 1913, Hitler and Häusler give notice of departure to the police, but don't state where they plan to live. I had arrived in this town as a boy and departed as a quiet and serious man. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. These are the years just before the outbreak of the First World War. It would be wrong to label these adolescent days untarnished as the dawn of light. But the sun of a believable century was still shining. Mankind was still free of barbarism. One felt century superior to the demons of the Dark Ages. It was really a delight to be alive. Wilhelm Mattu, Königsberg, teacher's son. It was a beautiful Sunday afternoon in spring. Someone knocked on the door and I answered it. It was a young man wanting to see the room we were renting. I showed it to him, and we reached an agreement. Frau Anna Pop, landlady. Adolf Hitler and Rudolf Häusler rent a room together from the tailor Pop at 34 Schleisheimer Straße, near the district of Schwabing. To avoid investigation by the Austrian military administration, Hitler declares himself stateless on his registration form. Life in Munich was diverse, colorful and energetic, with rich opportunities for employment, activity and fun. It was a luxurious life. You lived cheaply and comfortably. Eugen Kalkschmidt, bookseller, memoirs. Schwabing was full of eccentric people. All Munich learned to tolerate and enjoy the oddity of their existence. Erich Musan, German Jewish publicist. In purely personal terms, Hitler liked the carefree artists of Schwabing. When I dig out my memory of a Schwabinger, he was really into it with his body and soul and laughed heartily. But on a political level, he rejected artistic folk. Heinrich Hoffmann, photographer, Munich. In Munich, Adolf Hitler has found the city that is to become the center of his life. He does, however, remain an outsider. His inheritance helps him build an uncertain yet adequate existence on the fringe of society. In 1913, a young man came into the shop and offered me an aquarelle of the Munich residential palace. I liked the painting and I bought several pictures from the young Hitler. As I recall, I paid him 15 to 20 marks for a painting, depending on its execution. Otto Paul Kerber, goldsmith and gem cutter. Usually around 4.30 in the afternoon, Hitler came into the bakery and always bought the same thing. A slice of braided sweet white bread for five pfennigs. Then he went across the street to Dairyman Huber and bought half a litre of milk. That was his dinner. Franz Heilmann, baker, Munich. The younger generation that we belonged to didn't know anything about war, but were intoxicated by foreign wars. We had no real idea what war was. Adolf's father had never been a soldier. Now and again, old men would talk about Königgrätz and Kostotze. 
August Kubicek. Diary, Friday, June the 26th, 1914. Each day goes by just like the last. The children are well. Henrietta Schneider, housekeeper, East Prussia. Diary, Monday, June the 29th, 1914. Archduke Franz Ferdinand, the heir apparent to the Austrian throne, has been killed along with his wife. The scum of moral turpitude. Henrietta Schneider. The incident triggers a war in the Balkans that grows to become a world war. In the summer of 1914, I was at a spa in Wiesbaden. Day after day, you could see how war psychosis was spreading through the population. Gustav Mannerheim, colonel of the Russian Imperial Army of Finnish Swedish origin. Diary, Sunday, July the 26th, 1914. The fear of war is again evident. Dispatches told us that war has broken out between Serbia and Austria because Serbia doesn't want to fulfill the demands of Austria. Henrietta Schneider. Letter, July the 30th, 1914. Cat, dear, it is all up. Germany has quenched the last hopes of peace by declaring war on Russia and the declaration against France is momentarily expected. The world has gone mad, and we must look after ourselves and our friends. Sweet cat, my tender love, kiss the kittens. Winston Churchill, first Lord of the Admiralty, to his wife Clementine. Diary, August the 2nd, 1914. Germany has declared war on Russia swimming classes in the afternoon. Franz Kafka, Prague, insurance clerk. For me, those hours were a release from the annoying emotions of youth. I'm not ashamed to say today that I was overwhelmed with enthusiasm, fell to my knees and thanked the heavens with all my heart that they'd given me the good fortune to live in this era. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. The German Reich has an imperial fleet, but no army of its own. 21 of the 24 German federal states send their recruits to Prussian regiments. The kingdoms of Bavaria, Saxony and Württemberg deploy their own armies. The Austrian citizen Hitler, unwilling to do military service there, will join the Royal Bavarian Army, although this is actually only permitted to citizens of the German Reich. On August the 2nd, 1914, the day after Germany declares war on Russia, there is a big patriotic rally on Odeonsplatz in front of the Feldherrn Hall. On August the 5th, 1914, I enlisted in the army on a request to His Majesty and entered the 1st Bavarian Infantry Regiment. I was deferred for several days, then transferred to the 2nd Infantry Regiment and finally assigned to the Bavarian Reserve Infantry Regiment No. 16 on August the 16th. Adolf Hitler, outline of my person. Heinrich Hoffmann photographs the ceremony. Years later, in an enlargement, he discovers a face among the masses, which is presumably Hitler's. There were younger and older men, the so-called substitute reservists. We had companies that comprised up to 60% one-year volunteers. Helmets, at that time the pointed Kaiser helmets, weren't available. As a start, we marched out wearing the charcoal cap provided for the National Guard. Fritz Wiedemann, 2nd Lieutenant, Bavarian Reserve Infantry Regiment, 16.
The regiment is named the List Regiment, after its first commander, Colonel Julius List. For the first time in his life, Adolf Hitler wears a uniform. Hitler's landlady reports that he came to her on Friday, August the 9th, 1914, to say goodbye. He took my husband by the hand and said, If I die, would you please write to my sister? Maybe she'd like to have my few possessions. If not, you can keep them. I'm sorry if I've caused you any difficulties. He shook my hand as well as I stood there crying. We were all so fond of him. Anna Pop, landlady to Adolf Hitler in Munich. Hitler's personnel files show an objective picture of a courageous, well-behaved soldier who was twice wounded or injured by mustard gas. He saw military action from beginning to end and was highly decorated for his bravery. Report of the Bavarian War Archive, October the 13th, 1924. He served four years in the same regiment, with only short breaks, and took part in nearly all the battles. Fritz Wiedemann, second lieutenant. In the early morning hours of October the 21st, 1914, Hitler's regiment sets out from Munich station in a westerly direction. Later in the year 1924, Adolf Hitler reads a draft of his book, Mein Kampf, to Rudolf Hess, his cellmate in Landsberg prison. He talks about deployment and the ride along the Rhine. The train with the young volunteer regiment winds its way past the Niederwald Memorial. The song, The Watch on the Rhine, resonates from the lips of the boys. Rudolf Hess, letter to Ilse Proel. On the morning of October the 23rd, the regiment crosses the Belgian border and by the evening reaches the northern French town of Lille. From a distance, we heard the monotonous sound of our heavy mortars. We dismounted and lounged around the rifle pyramids. Shortly before midnight, we finally marched into the town itself. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. In the Battle of Flanders, a quarter of the soldiers from Hitler's regiment are killed. If Hitler had spent the final four years of the war in the trenches, the chances of his survival would have been very low. Shortly after the first combat mission of the List Regiment, Hitler is promoted to Lance Corporal. He will reject further promotions during the course of the war. This would have involved an attachment to other army units, and Hitler would have lost the camaraderie and security of the regimental family. For the first time, Hitler was part of a bigger community, and with that came the order and structure that spared him the daily struggle to survive. Fritz Wiedemann, Lieutenant. As of November the 9th, Hitler is deployed as a dispatch runner and assigned to the regimental staff. His main task is to bring command messages to the various battalions of the regiment. In the eyes of many soldiers in the trenches, the staff orderlies behind the immediate front are privileged cowards. All ordinary soldiers think that anyone from the regimental staff is a cowardly swine. It's also true, however, that it was better to be in the regimental staff than in the company. Adolf, we can't deny that we were in the regimental staff. These people think that no officer was ever hit by a rifle or a machine gun bullet. For them, Anyone who didn't serve in the trenches didn't serve at all. Ferdinand Wittmann, musician, comrade of Adolf Hitler in the regimental staff, in a letter, 1932. Hitler is respected by his comrades at regimental headquarters, but he remains an outsider. In five of six photos showing Hitler with his comrades, 
he's either standing or sitting to one side. Diary, July the 7th, 1916. The English are also advancing, but the Germans are positioned well in front of Verdun. Hoyer's terrible letter. His best friend is seriously wounded. Both arms torn off. Many others are dead. He writes that if he still had a mother, he would ask her to pray for him. Kita Kolwitz, painter and sculptress. In early 1915, Adolf Hitler, too, is already disillusioned. As other comrades turn to alcohol or religion or lose their self-discipline, Hitler claims to have undergone a metamorphosis. Whenever death was on the prowl, a certain something attempted to rebel and appeared to the weak body in the guise of reason and was in fact only cowardice that was behind this disguise, trying to seduce the individual. By the winter of 1915-16, this battle was already decided for me. The will itself had finally become my complete master. Now fate could put me to the test without me losing my nerves. A young war volunteer had become an old soldier. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. On October the 2nd, 1916, the regimental staff at Le Barque takes over a house with a fortified shelter. You could hardly sit down. You tripped over comrades' legs. The air was thick and damp, almost suffocating. Balthasar Brandmeier, dispatch runner. Hitler is wounded in the left thigh by British artillery shrapnel on October the 5th, 1916. Balthasar Brandmeier. I'd just taken a seat next to Hitler when a shell hit in the middle of the corridor. The ceiling was shattered into a thousand pieces and the fragments went everywhere. Fritz Wiedemann, Lieutenant. Six dispatch runners were wounded. Among them was my messenger, Adolf Hitler. As I leaned over him, he said to me, It's not that bad, Lieutenant, sir. I'll stay with you, stay with the regiment. Four days later, Hitler is taken to the Red Cross Hospital in Bielitz, south of Berlin. By March the 1st, 1917, he's back running dispatches in the regimental staff. In the following months, he participates in combat activities. On August the 4th, 1918, Hitler is awarded the Iron Cross First Class, the highest military honor that soldiers of his rank in the Imperial German Army can receive. The nomination was submitted by a Jewish officer, Lieutenant Hugo Gutmann. I never got out of Hitler the reason for his fanatical hatred of Jews. The experience with Jewish officers during the World War couldn't have contributed to this. Fritz Wiedemann, Lieutenant. The only two military medals that Hitler will wear in the Third Reich are the Iron Cross and the Black Wound Badge from the First World War. The Western Front collapses on August the 8th, 1918. As a result, General Ludendorff declares to Kaiser Wilhelm II on September the 29th that a military catastrophe is unavoidable. He asks the Kaiser to request a ceasefire with the Allies within 24 hours. An abrupt change in the posture of the Supreme Army Command from pretended confidence in victory to an admission of defeat. On September the 27th, 1918, Adolf Hitler returns to his regiment from leave. The day after, a British attack forces the regiment to abandon its position. In the night of October the 13th, 
Hitler's war service ends in a heavy British barrage. The English pester the position, especially with gas, which leads to deplorable losses, including a large part of the regiment staff. History of the regiment, Munich, 1932. Mustard gas was used. On a hill south of the city of Vervik, on October the 13th, we came under several hours of artillery fire with gas shells. Already around midnight, some of us dropped out, including some comrades, permanently. In the morning, I too experienced pain that grew stronger every 15 minutes. And at seven o'clock, I staggered and stumbled back with burning eyes, taking my last message of the war with me. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. After treatment in a mobile army hospital, Adolf Hitler is transported to the Prussian Reserve Hospital in Parzewijk, Western Pomerania. He's been on the front for 42 of the 51 months of the war. Hitler remains in Parzewijk for 28 days, during which the world changes. <laughs> 